Hey, thanks for watching another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. This video is on a 1F and a 2F outside corner joint. A 1F is sitting just exactly flat like this, like a TP, and a 2F will be turning at 90 degrees. So we'll do the 1F first and then proceed to the 2F. Not much difference in them at all. 115 amps on this one, full pedal. Let's go. All right, if you have a tack on the very end, Sometimes it's better to take the care, take a minute, and put another tack just about a quarter of an inch inboard from it. Sometimes you'll melt the tack and it doesn't have any strength when it's molten and it'll just come apart if there's any stress in the joint. Now we're going to try to get a lot of different looks from a lot of different angles here. I think that's more instructive when you can do that. See, I'm trying to just take that puddle just just nip those corners and nothing more than that and that's because I'm using a, a 332 rod and 115 amps and that's kind of what it wants to do later on just a little bit we'll weld this same joint with a much smaller filler wire this is pretty realistic though if you were trying to really get a job done it's just about the right size doesn't require a whole lot of feeding of the filler rod works pretty good tapered off there in about a crater time of about one second on the end and we'll check it for penetration on the other side I got some evidence of penetration there that could be enough in some instances it just depends on the application or what the weld symbol calls for but you do want to see some evidence of penetration now as we as we shift on to a smaller diameter rod you're gonna see the puddle drop down into that root of the joint a little bit more this is a 045 diameter rod and any of these will go better if you clean the metal even though this is cold rolled steel cleaning it to shiny bright metal and wiping it with acetone helps quite a bit so we'll get a tack on each end here trying to get the tack smaller than the completed weld so that when I consume the tack you won't be able to see it or any any real evidence of it so I'm trying not to go any past the corners there with the tack welds it's pretty easy to do with the small filler wire. All right, take a few little dry runs, make sure we're not going to get hung up on anything. And in this case, I'm using a number eight standard gas lens cup, about 20 CFH. You see that the, the small filler wire has much less of a chilling effect when it enters the puddle. It really doesn't affect the puddle much at all, and that is the, one of the benefits of using a smaller filler wire. The drawback is you have to feed a lot more wire, so you have to get that filler rod hand up to speed with a smaller wire. Now let's take a look now at the front edge of this puddle. What we like to see is uh, the puddle going all the way down into the very bottom or the root of this joint. I'll outline it right here. It's sort of a little V shape. That, that means that molten metal is going all the way down in there. You may not be able to see it much on the backside, but at least you know you penetrated or flowed metal all the way down into the root when you can see that, and that's a good thing. All right, that joint is completed. Now we'll move on to the 2F. Not much difference, again, there's hardly any difference in the technique, just really electrode angle. Just change up the electrode angle where you point it straight into the root of that joint. That's really all you do. Now I'm resting this on a piece of aluminum angle just to provide a little bit of a heat sink. But here are the settings, roughly the same as the, the, the 1F position or the flat position. And I'm moving along here at a pretty good clip of a rate of about an eighth of an inch per second. And that's the same rate that I'm dabbing filler wire. Now this is sort of a top view of that same weld. Moving along again at a pretty good clip. No point in waiting around very long. You're just going to get more heat buildup and more distortion if you hang around. Keeping the arc length, that's the distance from the tip of the electrode to the puddle, at one electrode diameter or less. That's a good rule of thumb. Here you can see me. I can actually look through the cup on that number eight Furic clear cup. That's a benefit to using that, that style cup. And again, move ahead roughly an eighth, add rod once per second, and you'll get some uniformity. This is 11 gauge cold rolled steel, almost an eighth of an inch, three millimeters roughly. It almost always requires filler metal or you're not gonna have a full strength joint or a joint that's strong enough. You could probably make this weld in some instances without filler metal, but it's almost always gonna require filler. 
Really thin metal, on the other hand, often does not require filler. This is some 18 gauge here using pulse settings without filler metal. One and a half pulses, 30% peak time, and 5% background amperage is a really good setting for this. Along with chill bars, you can really limit distortion and discoloration on something thin without filler metal. All right, this, this video was brought to you by weldmonger.com. That's my online store. So right now, this is sort of a commercial for some of the products that I offer there. First up is a TIG Finger and TIG Finger XL. Sometimes you have to weld on preheated parts, like this is high strength steel, 4140 steel, and it's 500 degree preheat. So propping on that is a bit of a problem unless you have something to prop on. So I just slipped a TIG Finger on, and I'm cooking this in there at about 160 amps just leaving the wire in the puddle for the first pass. I put two passes on this thing just because of what the drawing called for in weld size. And I uh, used ER70S2 and kept it up to 500 degrees the whole time. So, it's, you know, you got to have something to shield the heat if you're going to do that. Here's a tip for getting a ground on something round like this. It's hard to fit a ground clamp on. Just get some braided copper wire stripped out of an old TIG torch or an old ground clamp and it works great for grounding round parts. Here I'm doing a little build up on a shaft journal that will be machined. A new radius will be cut in there. The TIG Finger also works really good for 6G pipe tests. Sometimes like in, in this case I'm not walking the cup, I'm freehanding. And sometimes the pipe gets pretty hot. And the last thing you need when you're taking a test is to be thinking about knuckles burning and all that. So it's just it's one less thing to think about. It gives you lots of options on ways to prop. Two inch and smaller diameter, I don't walk the cup on typically. Um, here I'm, I'm doing the, the, the what's called the hot pass. Sometimes it's really not any hotter than the root pass. Sometimes it is. But um, you could walk the cup here. But if this was, say, down to one inch, it would be really difficult to walk the cup on small diameters. So I just like to have the freedom of movement to move as quickly as I need to to prevent from sucking back the root pass. I took this job on several months ago doing a, a run of about 50 parts and part of it I could just walk the cup like this at about 200 amps and really sink a, a nice looking weld bead in there and it went really fast and really nice but the, on the other end of it was this different shaped piece and just didn't work very well to walk the cup so I pulsed it and just laid the wire in there and just propped lightly with uh, my TIG Finger XL. You can see that's red hot there, but my fingers never got hot. I did another run. This is actually the same part. It got further work done on it. It got machined and split and everything with some collars welded on it and several welds on here and it, it was really getting hot. So this is the TIG Finger XL with two fingers propped in there. It got the TIG Finger and then the TIG Finger XL, which is bigger and thicker. And then also I offer them as a bundle on the website for a little bit of a savings. Also, another really popular product is a stubby gas lens for 17, 18, and 26 style torches. You know, they come with this style cup. And nothing wrong with that, but when you get about to a 7 16 of an inch stick out, it's hard to get shielding. And on stainless steel, when you get shielding like this, it's all gray, things just go south really quickly. Here I'm using a uh, same size cup, just you know, same stick out, but things are going way better. The gas lens just really provides a lot better shielding and helps you run with a longer stick out, and that's great for stainless steel. And I have a basic version of this too with just a 332 setup. Here I'm using a number six stubby gas lens. I like the number six for aluminum. It's a little less gas flow. It, it seems to provide a real stable arc on aluminum and helps with penetration on something. Uh, you know, when this is only about... Uh, a sixteenth of an inch thick here, 1.6 millimeters, but um, it helps. The number six helps. I also have bundles like this with the stubby kit, DVDs, and TIG fingers. And if you added everything up individually, it's quite a savings. A uh, new product, fairly new product, is a ceramic Furic number 12, a really durable number 12 cup that lets you run a nice long stick out. And uh, for stainless steel parts or when you need a long stick out, it's a durable cup that that really provides a nicely shielded weld. Clear Pyrex version of that ceramic 12 is called the FUPA 12. Don't really understand that, but that's what it's called. I call it the Furic 12. It's a great cup. It's just not quite as likely to survive a drop as the ceramic 12 is, but it provides great shielding 
on edge joints like this, you know, it, that can split the gas and, and you, it turns all gray and doesn't flow really good well. So this, this makes it flow really nice. Here I'm using 50 pulses a second, 33% pulse time, 33% background, and it did a great job on that buildup edge, edge weld there. 25 CFH. This only takes a little bit more than like a number 8 standard gas lens. But you don't always need a number 12. I, I like the number 8 for a lot of different jobs. And uh, I set it up here on this positioner weld. And uh, this is that same weld that I was doing earlier when I was doing uh, walking the cup on. But I also did some experimenting with pulse on that same joint. Did a great job. Here's a little quick tip for you using that 8 eight cup you can see how well it lights everything up but a long arc when you're TIG welding is one of the biggest mistakes that learners make let's take a look now at not changing anything still using the same exact amperage the same everything just tightening up that arc length a lot and that is the ticket for progress when you're learning how to TIG weld use a tight arc here's the number eight again on a little series of little lap joints I did you can kind of see how it's lighting everything up making it easier to see where I'm going. This is about 170 amps on a little series of parts that I did not too long ago. A little, little, some kind of little lifting mechanism, had an eye bolt on it and everything. The number eight is also rated for alternating current up to 200 amps. Does a great job on aluminum as well as steel. And here I'm really pushing it hard at 200 amps. That's the max rating. This is uh, using a, a machine that has a feature called advanced pulse, where it alternates in between electrode negative and alternating current. And it really provides some deep penetration on, on, on quarter inch aluminum like I'm welding here. You couldn't get this kind of penetration with a 200 amp machine otherwise. It is a good all around cup for both steel and aluminum. One of the biggest benefits, as I've already mentioned, is just the fact that it sort of acts like a big floodlight and kind of lights the way. So, you know, I'm, I'm in my 60s now. It's not as easy to see the joint, the seam, the line where I'm headed as it used to be. So it really helps light things up for me. I've also got the number, the number eight bundled with some other products for a little bit of a savings. All right, this is the mag tab, the strong hand tools mag tab. And this is a handy little tool. You know, it's mainly meant for welding little tabs like this on there. If you're going to, if you're building a dune buggy or something, sometimes you need little tabs for mounting things, wiring harnesses and things like that. But it, it holds any odd shaped uh, part really quickly. And it's just an easy way to hold something rather than holding it with your two fingers and then taking a chance on burning yourself. Super handy. One, one thing that I found was really handy was welding end caps on square tubing with it. That's not really what it's intended for, but it sure does work really well for it. You can get a few tacks on an end cap like that and then come around and weld it, and it just beats the heck out of holding it with your fingers and trying to blast a few fusion tacks on there, Some, especially if you've got a little gap. You need something to hold it. If you don't have a gap, you can blast the fusion tack, no problem. But when you've got a gap, mag tap really, really comes in handy. This is a, a featured bundle I have with the TIG Finger, TIG Finger XL, DVD, and a stubby kit. I've also got just simple bundles like this Furic 8 along with a TIG Finger for a little bit of a savings. Uh, bundled DVDs along with t-shirts and, and TIG Fingers. And Weldmonger.com is my online store and that is how I pay for these videos. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.